let's jump right in. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick recap of what we ended off on last week, Thursday. I'm not going to help you hugely. All I'm going to do is to ask you a few questions while you do this. My first question to you is what is the equation of a straight line graph? What is the equation of a straight line graph? Remember, if you have an answer, just chuck that hand up and we will call your name. What is an equation of a straight line graph? It's Start with y equals. There we go, Amber. Yes. Wow, well done. Kind of, yes. Nice. Okay. What does the M stand for in that equation? Steepness, yes. Gradient, yes. Good. Okay. That is my gradient. Good. We find our gradient by looking at the change of y over the change of x. Okay, or slope, yes, good. What does the C stand for in this equation? Good, the y. Okay, so in this case, our y-intercept would be there. We don't have its value. Okay. So you're going to need to find M, you're going to need to sub in a set of coordinates and you need to find C. And then I want to know what my final equation is for this. Get your brains turning. Let's see how you go. And if you need any help along the way, just shout, just ask. Let's go my people. Woo. Cheering out for you guys. Party, don't panic. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find your M value. Okay, so you're looking for this guy. And you're going to find M by using that equation over there. So to help you out, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to say that that's X1, that's Y1, that's X2, Y2. So now you know what numbers are what. So you're going to put those numbers into that equation. You're going to try and find M. And once you've found M, you're going to use substitution to try and find C. We can do this, my people. Let's go. Anna, let's go. Let's go. Piana, hello. Hi, ma'am. How ma can I help? Um, I don't know what happened in class, ne, but I, sh I wasn't listening, but I was, but I wasn't. Okay. Okay. So, like, the teacher just said dull method, ne, and I don't know what she was talking about because I don't know what is she talking about, but I don't know, ne, it was the first time we did it in class. I already did it on the online class. Then I asked her, she told me I'm doing the intercept method. Yeah. So, like, so, like, is there other method? The other method is to do it using a table. Is it the only other method? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, did she, could she have said dual? Do you think that's a word she could have said? Yes. Okay, because then she's probably talking about the dual intercept method, which is the same as intercept intercept method, which is the same as what we did. Oh, okay. Now I'm an army because okay. now I know she's we did the same thing. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, let's have a look. We have some answers coming in. Let's see what's, what's going on. So I'm going to substitute our answers in m is equal to y2, okay, so negative one minus y1, which is three, over x2, which is two, minus x1. So I've got to put it in brackets, which is negative two. Okay. So I land up with negative one minus three, which is ne Ooh. Hello. negative four over two plus two. And so I land up with negative four over four, which is negative one. Okay. Who landed up getting to that negative one? Who fell for the bracket trap? 
to got nowhere on this completely, give me a breakdown of where we are at just up to that point over there with finding that m is equal to negative one. I see user got it right. User, do you want to send me probably your name so I can change your name, <laughs> the user to your real name? Please feel So we don't have to call you user. Yeah. Okay, and now I'm seven out of 10, that's not bad. Kuplano, well done. 7.7, .7, very precise, I like it. Nandi, 10 out of 10, awesome. Kalita, yes, good. Chikundi, well done, especially for your first lesson, nice work. And Nam, hello, how can I help? Oh, uh, ma'am. Yeah. If you had done this, like, if you had changed the, the Ys, how would that have been, ma'am? So if your X is in, like, if you had made the others X is ones and X twos. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so then we would have had three, oh, I'm in high life mode, sorry. We would have had three minus negative one over negative two minus two, which would be three plus one over negative four, which mm -hmm. would be four over negative four, which would be negative four. Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Amber forgot to put the brackets. Shame, shame, shame. I know your name. Next time, Emma, next time, you'll do it. <laughs> Moabi, negative 100 out of 10. Okay, oh, no, 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 but it's Moabi. So, oh, yeah, it's Moabi, we know. Yeah, that's, we know. Moabi is always going to be the opposite, but he actually means the other side of things. Yes, so actually that means, that means 100, 100 out of, out of 100. 10. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we're fine. Okay. Once we have m is equal to negative one, we now need to find c, okay? And we find c by, by using substitution. So I'm going to write our equation so far. We have y equals negative one x plus c. And then we're going to sub in a point. You can choose either point. You can choose this point or you can choose that point. Doesn't matter, okay? So I'm going to sub in two and negative one. Remember that's x. And that's y. So y is going to be negative 1. That's equal to negative 1 times 2 plus c. So negative 1 is equal to negative 2 plus c. Negative 1 plus 2 equals c, which means c is equal to 1. And so our whole equation becomes y equals negative 1x plus 1. Tell me how this went. Do we need to do another question like this before we do different types of questions? Do we need to do one more like this? We should do one more means. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we won't, because my I next guess. sentence starts, what about weird graphs? Let's not go to weird graphs just yet then. Let's just do one more like this. Okay, cool. yeah, how can I help? Hi, ma'am. Um, I right. just want to know why we have equations on both sides. Like, why does negative 1 equals negative 1 times 2 plus x and not just um, negative, like, why we, why we have negative 1 equals negative 1? Okay, so it's because this, this negative 1 over here, that's that y value. So that's a different value to this. This negative 1 is this m value. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, I know it's a, it's a bit confusing, but it, it, I promise it'll get better. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Okay, so let's do one more like this, and then we're going to look at some weird graphs. So one more like this. Again, I'm seeking an answer in the form y equals mx plus c. That is what I'm seeking.
We can do this, my people. Let's go. Thank you will surprise yourselves. Tirelendo, I see you. I hope you're writing some stuff down. <laughs> oh, guys. Remember, trying to do it in your head is not it's it's not the not the best way. No, it's it really not, guys. I know you're smart, but still you need to write it down. <laughs> yeah. Just going to slowly put in things that might help you. Chikondi, how is it going there? Are we winning, guys? <laughs> Yo, we're going there. <laughs> Nice. Good, 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 good. Ma'am, I have a question. Where was that hand, Tiana? Ma'am, I forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm a stagist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is your question? I can see a stagist. So, I forgot now how, where does the equation come from? Did, where, where does it come from now? What do you mean? What? Where does what equation come from? Did of the last part must any must substitute what what? Oh, the C. Choose it as yeah the C. Okay, so uh, once you have found yeah once you have found M, so this way you find M. You're gonna put your answer to M into that equation, um, and then the only unknown value would be C. Ish. Okay. But what if my answer is a goal? <laughs> then I want to be emotional. <laughs> you're going to be tired. Calm the farm, Tiara. You're going to be tired. Where's your mom? Because you must motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> I am motivating you. This is motivation. But TJ, you're tired today. Yeah. Oh, I'm you're writing up your phone. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to open best. Oh, Rabe, yes. I always keep on calling you by your surname. Thank you, yeah. Linda. Yeah. <laughs> we have Amber. Amber on the line. Amber, yes. Are you going to give us our answer, Amber? No, man. <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> I, I have a question. Okay. Um, with the brackets, where exactly yeah. do they fall in? Because so, I saw, like, yeah. It's when you're going to minus a negative, then there needs to be a bracket. Only. Only, Only. like the negatives. Okay. Yeah. Does that All help? Right. Okay. Yes, a lot. Thank you, okay. ma'am. Okay, no problem. Good, good. Um, Yusuf, I see that you are unmuted, although I didn't see a hand. Yes, ma'am. There is a question. Yes, <laughs> so, uh, ma'am, uh, I've been lost in class, ma'am. I don't know what's happening. But, okay. uh, so, uh, I said it's gonna reveal a little bit of the answer. Okay. So I said, um, uh, so for the denominator of that question, I said two minus negative two. It gave yeah. me zero. Yeah, that would no, no. Did you have the negative two like that in brackets? Oh no. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Traps, guys. Remember, teacher Dan likes to trap you for your own. You good. know it. Yeah, school. guys. At school, you don't know my caps by now. Brackets. Brackets. Yes, Tiana. Well done for putting up your hand. I'm so proud of myself for putting up you my hand. Be. You should be very proud, um, yeah. So I have a question. Say like, like, ish, but now I'm going to give it away, the answer. But say now um, we like, Get our answers most of friction. Yeah. Is it two That's over four? Like negative two over four. Can I like make it negative one over two? Yes, that is exactly what you should make. Even if it's a negative on top. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. No problem. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of talk through our M here a little bit because we've made some progress. So I've just put my Y2 minus my Y1 and my X2 minus my X1. Remember, these brackets are very important because we're minusing negative numbers. Okay, so what that becomes is negative 3 plus 1 over 2 plus 2. And so we have negative 2 over 4, and that simplifies down to negative 1 over 2. Now, you can have that negative there. You can have that negative there, or you can have that negative there. I don't mind. They all mean the same thing. All three of these mean the same thing. So as long as there is a negative, I'm fine. Okay. And a nice way to check if you're correct is remember when you read a book. Okay. So if you read a book or you um, read anything, you always read something from left to right. That's how we read. Okay. We read from left to right. So if we were reading this graph from left to right, you'll see that your line goes down. And because your line goes down, you will have a negative gradient. If your line goes up, you will have a positive gradient. So that's a nice way of checking that you are correct and that you haven't made a mistake. Okay. So, so far we have got M is equal to negative a half. So now we're going to put that into our equation. So y is equal to negative a half x plus c. We're going to choose a point to sub in. So I'm going to sub in negative 2 and negative 1. But remember, you can sub in 2 and negative 3 if you want to. OK, so I'm going to get negative 1 is equal to negative a half times negative 2 plus c. Remember, our calculator is our friend. Negative a half times negative two gives us positive one plus C. I'm going to move that one over. I'm going to get negative two is equal to C, which means my equation is Y equals negative a half X minus two. How did we do? How does it go? Tell me good things. Let's vote, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, yes. What's going on? <coughs> oh, no, there was a 90 to start. So maybe this is like 900,000? Yeah, it could be. He's good. Well done. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, <nope>, zero. <laughs> Diana, yeah. Ma'am. So I did good like the first part. Then that sub part is still where I went wrong. I don't understand. I, I'm lying. I do understand it. It's just, it's just too much to process because I forget the step. Yeah, no, it is a lot to process. It, it does take time. We'll do one more of these tonight um, before we move on to some different crafts. We'll do one more to kind of cement it in, okay? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, Kutwano, yeah, how did it go? Hi, ma'am. It went oh. good until I realized I forgot the negative sign. Oh. When writing down the equation. You banana! Don't do that! Ma'am, but I fixed it before you okay. finish. Yeah. Before well, I finish? Ma'am. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> Okay, let's try one more like this and then we'll try some weird graphs. Um, okay, let's do this one. So one more like this and then we'll go into some weird looking graphs. See, it's banana. This is my go-to, my go-to insult. You're being a banana. <laughs> And ma'am, how can I help? Uh, ma'am, for that bracket thing, do you always put it when you're minusing like anything with a negative? 
Yes, whenever you minus a negative, there needs to be brackets. So like, for example, if I had like four minus negative uh, two, would I put like four and then I put the minus bracket minus four? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Thank you, man. Nice job. Good job. Just do your best. You'll be fine. I trust you, my people. I trust you, my pebs. Let's go. We can do this. Yeah, it's almost over. I can't believe it. Random thoughts. I'm wondering how many people are getting this right, do you, Linda? Do, should we take a bet? Um, hmm. I think I think my people are gonna get it. They you think are, people are gonna get it right? Yeah. I'm I'm worried they're gonna fall for a trap somewhere. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say most people are gonna say they got eight out of ten. Uh, I'm rooting for ten. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Rooting for 10 out of 10, my people. Don't disappoint me. Let's go. I trust in you guys. Um, okay, listen, Sudan, if you're feeling too shy to speak, you don't have to speak. You can also write your answer in the chat. And one day, I promise you won't feel shy to speak to me. Yeah, we were not <laughs> nice. I'm not scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to start going through this. So I'm going to write x1, y1, x2, y2. Just going to repeat myself again here. You don't have to put those there. They just help us from making silly mistakes, okay? And in math, never be embarrassed to do more steps because if it's stopping you from making a silly mistake, it is worth it, okay? Now, I'm going to find my m value by looking at my change of y over my change of x. So I'm going to say negative one minus three over two minus negative two, which is going to give me negative four over two plus two, which is going to be negative four over four, which is going to give me negative one. Okay, so my gradient will be negative one. Then you can choose any one that you want to sub in over here. So I'm going to sub in two and negative one. So I'm going to say y is equal to negative one x plus c and i'm going to sub in two and negative one so i'm going to get negative one is equal to wait haven't we done this why do these numbers feel so familiar last class <laughs> oh <laughs> okay i was like what okay so negative one plus two gives us one we get one is equal to c so our equation is y is equal to negative one x plus one okay i want to know so that you lend oh, and i can guys. figure out who is winning you have to give us an answer out of 10. yes 10 out of 10 i know well mm. oh, well done well done well done the only time where i'm is honest yeah. with us <laughs> i I'm know winning. you lend oh. you're winning and i am not winning i'm not winning at all i'm winning <laughs> Um, <laughs> how can we help you ma'am this one was the exact same one as the first one that you gave us this one okay so these numbers are the same okay well then these answers don't count you learned that i was like why are these numbers so similar i feel like i know these numbers from somewhere thank you I for helping that it's from the last class ah you see linda we've just done too many of the same graph we've got graphs <laughs> floating around in our heads well, oh, then all of you of should 10. have gotten 10 out of 10 for this. Every single person. <laughs> yes, exactly. Never mind. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick brain break. Um, we're going to go to Brian Quickie. And then we are going to look at some weird graphs. So let's just quickly go to Brian. Okay, I've gone back to one of our old ones. You'll see what I mean by that when you see the question. Just, I'm looking for that question mark. Let me know. Let me know once you have it. Let's go, my people. We can do this. Remember, if you are working like on the pink pen, everything, you better get the answer faster than trying to work it out in your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Already love. <laughs> Let's see how you go. <laughs> I've got lots of science coming my way, Yolanda. Maybe I should have taken a bet on this question. Get it right. I'm sure they're gonna get it right. Claudio, are you gonna help me out? Let's do this question, go. <laughs> Ma'am. Yeah. Uh I think uh I'm a little confused, but um let me just see. So wait, are the values for the first one eight? The first one. Oh, the truck. No. It's like a yeah. single truck. Yes. Yes. A single track would be eight. I that's yes. I just helped them with the last one. Well, you did. You've helped. You've helped a little bit, yes. Actually, when you look at it, you help with much more because now it's so easy to find an answer. Let's go, my people. Think about think about your ship snakes, guys. Oh, think about these ships. Yeah. Jasmine, hello. Um, so the two tracks put together is uh, 16. The whole line on the top is 16. Yes, so two tracks together would be 16, yes. Come on, guys, what's my sailing ship? What's my sailing ship? It's seven. It's seven. I heard you yes, say seven. So like, so like, since like, okay, never mind, it's fine. You'll got it. <laughs> no, keep on talking. You can tell us the next part. <laughs> no, ah, uh, man, ah, uh, to be honest with you, I was just excited to see the boats, but then like someone oh, else got no. it, so. Yeah, you just, just snuck in there. Sorry, Tilo. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, so so far we have seven times seven plus eight so now we know that this is going to be 14 down here so you have you have there's some help that's happened over here yeah exactly to take the chilos back oh, ma'am i have your answer okay okay tell me what to do next well what are my okay. airplanes so so the airplanes are 18 like one of them is yeah. 18 i mean do wait no. is it one that's 18 no no two of them are 18 okay so 18 divided by two is nine good so nine plus 40, uh, yes, ma'am. So yeah, the, the answer is 118. 118. Wait, let me just uh, pop out my calculator okay. times. Something called 41. Boldness. 41. Boldness. Hey, hey, hey. Yo, yo, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yo, ah, ah. <laughs> All of these people are trying to rescue you or something in the chat. They're all like, we're telling you. We're telling you what the answer is. What mess was? 131. 131. <laughs> yes, yes. Bad mess. Bad Okay. So we, the trick here was you have to do these two first. So 14 times 8 and then plus your 9 and they gave you 121. I hope that that has 
giving your brain a bit of a break and you feel breakified. My hope, that's my hope. <laughs> um, and we are going to jump back into some mathematics from here. Okay. Nice job, Lois. Um, okay, so we're going to look at some weird graphs. What's different about this graph? So this is, this is the graph, this yellow line. What's different about that graph to the graph that we've been doing in previous questions? Tiana, yeah. Ma'am, it's a straight line and it's like, it's like going like this. It's not going. Yeah, like it's, just, it, it's a completely straight line. There's no slope. Right, it's just it's completely straight. Okay, yeah, Chilo, exactly. It's parallel, so it is parallel to our x-axis. Okay, do you see that they are parallel to each other? Good. Okay, when we have a graph that is parallel to our x-axis like that, we only care about our y value. Do you see how your y value here is four and your y value here is four? And if you had a point over there, let's say our X value would be nine, our Y value would still be four because our Y value is never, ever, ever going to change. And our X value is going to be any, any number. So the way we write this is we say Y is equal to four. That's all we do. We don't have X's, we don't have plus C's. We just say when we have a straight horizontal line like this, we just say Y is equal to four. That's it. Does anyone have any questions about what they're currently seeing before I look to the next one? Yeah, Tiana. Ma'am, so why don't we say it's Y um, zero like the other ones? So the reason we don't have any of the other things that we normally have is because there is no gradient. So in that normal equation, the M stands for gradient and gradient is a slope. And we don't have a slope because it's a flat line. So we don't have an M value. And our C value, we're never going to have a point that's going to cross there other than that four. So basically what you're seeing is if we wrote Y equals MX plus C, basically what's happening is that M is zero because there's no slope, okay? And zero times anything is going to be zero. So all we care about is our y-intercept, which is plus four. So that's basically just saying zero plus four, which is four. So we can kind of just skip that step. When we have a nice horizontal line like that, we can just say what our y-value is. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at one that looks slightly different, and then I'm going to give you two to try. Okay, this one, the reason that this one's different is because it's not a horizontal line, it's a vertical line, okay? And now it is parallel to the Y axis. So if in the last one, we said that Y is equal to something, can anyone think what we would say for this one? Who's feeling brave? Okay, so Amber and Jasmine, I like the negative three, but what is going to equal negative three? What is going to equal negative three? Yes, Kudwano, yes, and Devo, nice. Done, guys. X is going to equal negative three, okay? Because our X value is negative three. And that's the only equation we write. We don't have anything else. So these are our two sneaky graphs that they like to put into trick. Okay, so. When we have a graph and we have a horizontal line like this, let's say that that's four, we would say y is equal to four. And when we have a vertical line like that, say that's two, we say x is equal to two. That's like a little cheat sheet to help you with these types of questions. Okay. If you want to take a screenshot, you can take one, and then I'm going to show you two that I want you to do yourself. Okay. Okay. What is the equation of this graph? What is the equation of this graph? Tiana? 
Tiana, hello. Ma'am, it's, it's, is it, is it y equals negative two? Yes, y is equal to negative two. Yes, good. Okay, because that is where it is crossing my y axis. So y is equal to negative two. Beautiful. Good. Does anyone have any questions about what they're seeing? Okay. Let's try one more. What would be the equation of this graph? Jasmine, you sneaky ninja, just giving me a number like that. I need to know what's equal to three. Is x equal to three? Is y equal to three? <laughs> Good job, guys. Nice. Well okay. done, guys. Okay, so this one, x is going to be equal to three. Good. Okay, so I just wanted us to quickly talk about these because they are going to come up in the questions we're going to do next. Um, so I didn't want you to be too scared of them. We're going to quickly jump into what we're going to talk about. We're not going to get very far, but we'll finish off what we don't speak about today. We'll finish off on Thursday, so don't stress. Okay. Let me just go down to where we need to go. Okay. So we are going to talk about points of intersection and parallel lines. What is a point of intersection? What is a point of intersection? Who can tell me in words what a point of intersection is? A point where things intersect. <laughs> I mean, yes, it is where they, it is where they intersect. But the, a point where people meet up, where it meets up. Yeah. Yes, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So it's where we have two lines and where they meet each other. Okay. So for example, if I had a set of axes like this, you have to be kind to me. I know that they're messy. And let's say I had a pink line like that and I had a green line like that. This point over here, let's do it in my favorite rainbow pen, that point over there would be a point of intersection so it's where my two graphs meet each other okay so it's like they were going about their day purple line went for some coffee then purple line went for a bit of a run green line was just walking along the street and then at some point so they were on the same street corner at the same time and that was when they met okay so that's the point of intersection is where both lines meet at the same place so they would have the same coordinates as each other at that point. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, and you're going to have to try and bring your memory back all the way from a couple of lessons ago, is I want you to sketch the graph y equals negative 3x plus 6. And I want you to do that by using the intercept, intercept method. Okay. And so what I mean by that is I want you to find the y-intercept, that's when x is equal to zero, and I want you to find the x-intercept, that's when y is equal to zero. And you're also going to draw y is equal to negative three, but that's a nice easy line because it's just a straight line, okay? You're going to draw both of those graphs on the same set of axes. So let's just draw our axes here. I would like you to draw those two graphs for me. And be careful with what the question says. It says very clearly label all intercepts of the axes. And because the question says that, that's why I'm wanting you to do the intercept intercept method so that we get those coordinates so that we can label them.
such a don't panic, calm yourself. Um, were you with us when we drew graphs together? Were you in those lessons? Or had you not joined us yet? You guys will be fine. Get Yana. <laughs> you were there. Okay, you know what? That's still fine. Don't panic. We'll go through it together. I want you to just give it a try. Just panic. Like, oh, I just said just panic. Just don't panic. Give it a small try, and I promise we will go through it together. I won't leave you stranded. I promise, promise. Tiana, can I yes. help? Bye. Ma'am, so I'm hmm. asking for the heat, basically. So I remember the intercept method, but then I don't remember the other part of the y equals negative three because that time a good teacher Coco and I forgot because it wasn't names words. Yeah. We we've all accepted that teacher Coco was amazeball. Why have you forgotten her words? She she was amazing. She was the yeah. energy everything was amazing. It's just I forgot. Yeah. But I forgot. Tiana, okay. Okay. I'll talk you through this. Okay. We can all just take a nice deep calm breath. Let's start this. We haven't done this in a number of weeks. Okay. So when we're drawing a graph, we want to find our two intercepts. The first thing we want to do is we want to find our x intercept. Okay. When we're looking for our x intercept, we make y equal to zero. So our equation is y equals negative three x plus six. And we're going to make y equal to zero. So we're going to say zero equals three x plus six. I'm going to move my six over. Negative six equals negative three x. I'm going to divide both by negative three. And so x is equal to two. Okay, so my coordinates will be two and zero. That's my first thing. Then I have to find my y-intercept. Okay, for my y-intercept, we make x equal to zero. So we say y is equal to negative three x plus six. We're going to make x equal to zero. So y is equal to zero plus six, which means y is equal to six. And so it's going to be zero, six. Okay, now we have our two coordinates. So we're going to plot them. I'm just going to put the markings in here. Okay. So zero and six is going to be zero and two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be there. Zero and six. And then I've got two and zero. That's going to be over here. And so my line is going to look like that. I'm going to put my arrows on and I'm going to give it its name. Who was a brain boss and managed to draw this green line? Who managed to get this whole green line on? Jasmine? Yes. Look at all these memes. Well done, guys. Good. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so that was our first step. Okay. It should look like I'm I'm seeing here and we're all happy. Next thing we have to draw in is this y equals negative three. So we're just gonna find y equals negative three. That's over there. And we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna draw a very, very straight line across. And that's gonna be negative three. Okay, who managed to get that blue line? I'll be very proud of you because we just learned about that today. Nice, Nico. Yes. Good job, guys. Yes, and the graph is decreasing. Look at you go. Yes. Oh, so proud. So proud. Okay, if you're like, what on earth is going on about decreasing? Remember, we read a graph from left to right. We are reading this graph from left to right, and my graph is going down, and which means it is decreasing. Okay, beautiful. Good. It is absolutely decreasing. Okay, 
So, so far we have done everything this question has asked us to do. Great. Next. Determine the coordinate of the point of intersection between the two graphs that you have drawn. Okay. So I want you to have a look on your graph and tell me if you can figure out what your coordinates of the point of intersection would be. And then I'm going to show you how you could work it out mathematically. So give me your best guesses in the chat. Tell me what you think the coordinates of your point of intersection would be at that point over there. Tell me what you think they would be. Okay, so now I'm saying three, negative three. Keep them coming, guys. Ooh, we're all agreeing. Tiana? Oh, Tiana's gone. Ish, Memo, I was going to say the same thing. Three, negative three. This was fast. Yeah, yeah people, people were too fast. Right. Yeah, they are, we are smart people. We really let them. Smart. Must, must do the things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm seeing the things. I see. <laughs> you guys are definitely right. It is three and negative three. I want to show you how you would do this mathematically, okay? So we've got the one equation, which is y equals negative three x plus six. And then our other equation where y is equal to negative three. Okay. This is telling you what y is equal to. It's saying y is negative three. So we can say, okay, well, if y is negative three, what is x going to be? Move the six over. So we're gonna have negative three minus six is equal to negative three x. So we get negative nine is equal to negative three x. Divide both by negative three. And you'll see that your answer is x is equal to three. And that's why our coordinates are going to be three and negative three. So you are 100% right. If you drew your graph accurately, you would have seen that the coordinates are three and negative three. This is just how we do it mathematically. So if in the question they said, please show calculations, you would need to do that. 